Hey guys, so I have sector four. I am still sick. I'm so sorry. Um, but I have sector four kind of lined up for you. Pretty much all the feet's done. There's one that's missing, which we'll go over in a little bit. Um, and then we can just have a look at gameplay and what's working. These in this sector seem fairly straightforward and doable, which is great. Um, and then we can have a look. I will flag right now for you guys, just before we even touch sector five, before we even get into it, which will hopefully be tomorrow. Um, it looks like there is a bug. So we have to inflict purge in sector five. And it looks like there is a bug where purge is counting when the enemies inflict it to you. Um, it looks like you have to activate it by cleansing it off of yourself and then it gets reapplied somehow. Um, so some of them are counting, some of them aren't. It's definitely counting on the boss, the Reva boss. Some people have are having it count on Grand Inquisitor nodes if they find them, some aren't. So definitely just keep your eye out on that because if you are noticing that it's happening, uh, you'll be able to accumulate it that way at least and not necessarily have to use your own Inquisitors if they're weaker. So again, just keep an eye out just in case. Um, but let's look at the actual feats in Sector 4. So we have to defeat 50 enemies with Hut Cartel units. This is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, a lot of us have some of the Hut Cartel already geared because of Executor fleets. So that's just something to keep in mind there. Just not to forget that it's not just Jabba or like the new marquee characters that we needed to get him. There are other people there as well. And then win 14 battles with no attackers in your squad. Pretty straightforward. You're going to use tanks, supports, or healers. Um, win 14 battles with a full squad of Ewoks. So this is the one that I can't crack yet. I did get very close. I will say I got close. Um, I only have two Ewoks at gear 12. The other two are gear 11 and one is gear 10. And I did not swap mods. They're not modded properly. And I got close. So I think it will be doable. I just need to tweak it a little bit and tweak the discs around. But I think think it will work so I'll come back to that one hopefully in the next day or two and then attempt to inflict torture 50 times so let's have a look at the video of the three that are definitely doable um Ewoks will will hopefully come back to I think this is going to be one that most people skip though is my guess because I think it's not necessarily going to be easy I think it's going to be a lot of RNG which can make people annoyed. Um, so for the 10 key cards, you might want to just skip it. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look at the video. So I want to start with a really straightforward one, which is winning 14 battles without any attackers in your squad. Uh, so like I said, you're going to want to use basically anyone that is a tank, healer, or support. So obviously no attackers. Um, and Padme has been my kind of go-to for no attackers slash support whatever you want to call it uh teams to win with uh especially if you have zealous ambition discs so again i have two zealous ambition discs equipped here they're gray ones um, i have a couple entrenched discs on just for some added survivability but realistically it's the zealous ambition that's going to make this team hit so hard because padme shock and yoda are all support characters uh c-3po is too of course but he's not really doing anything um, and then you have Kenobi there as your tank. So you don't have any attackers here in your squad, which is fantastic. And you can just make your way through the sector with them. I find that they are very consistent, very reliable. Um, they're really good against squads that are going to be putting out debuffs on you because obviously you can cleanse with Padme, Kenobi, and Shock. So you've got three cleansers, you've got a healer, you've got all this protection regeneration. It's just a really good durable team that I highly recommend having for Conquest. Um, and I use them every single Conquest. So it's not a team that's just going to sit on the shelf in three months time. So really straightforward. You can make your way through with that or any other team um, that would work for you. Next, I want to look at Hut Cartel. So obviously you can go with um, a full Jabba squad. You can go with bounty hunters, anything like that. If you don't have Jabba, this team seemed to be pretty reliable for me just to get a couple of kills in, particularly because again, I am using Zealous Ambition discs. So 
um, Boba and Cad Bane in particular were the two that I was thinking of uh, that most people will have geared because of um, Executor. And I did mean to grab Chewie, not Dash. So I don't want to take Dash at all because I don't want him stealing any kills. Since he is support, he's going to get a lot of firepower. But what a lot of people forget is that Cad Bane is also support. So he's also going to get a lot of firepower if you have Zealous Ambition Discs equipped. The other really cool thing with this squad um, is that because they're all scoundrels as well, if you have weaker characters with Bam there, he's able to put damage immunity on them to keep them around longer so that you can have an opportunity to land some kills. Um, so obviously I do have a couple kills getting stolen because I do have a volatile accelerator disc equipped and the dots from that are stealing some of my kills here. Um, but what you want to try to do is line up as many kills as possible to Boba or Cad, which is why you see me shooting Django here when he's got damage immunity, because I don't want any of the other three to steal those kills from them if possible. So again, super straightforward. You do get a couple this way in, and at least you can make your way through the sector while you're doing it as well, which I find is really helpful. So you're not necessarily having to find a node to farm it on afterwards. You can just clean up what you need at the end and you can see there we ended up getting two but again making your way through the sector they'll add up and then you can just get the rest at the end okay so here is the big one a torture so I only have two that is from using my Grand Inquisitor team as I made my way through the sector um, so obviously that's going to be a way for you to do it what I like about this team though is that one, it works on the Datacron bonus node. So fantastic there. You can farm your Datacron mats while you're farming torture. We're going to take Thrawn lead because he gives turn meter whenever um, Empire allies resist an effect or if they get a debuff. Uh, so <clears throat> that's going to be really great because Grand Inquisitor is Empire. So he's going to tag along because obviously he has torture. We want Watt. Because uh, we're going to need his techs here. And we're going to want Jedi Master Luke or another tank. I just prefer Jedi Master Luke as my tank all the time. And I did choose to take uh, Trip Zero. You can see he's only 4 star gear 8. Um, but he does inflict torture on his special. So I figured I would tag him along anyway just to see what happened. And we will go from there. So obviously you want your tank tech out on Jedi Master Luke or whoever your tank is. The great thing with this node is the Tuscans don't have an AOE. So having a weaker trip zero is okay here because they're only gonna hit your tank, which is which is fine. So you can see that they're just going all in on Luke, which is great. And then you want your weapons tech on Grand Inquisitor. You want Grand Inquisitor taking as many turns as possible because he's gonna be your main source of torture. Or if you don't have Grand Inquisitor and you only have trip zero, give the weapons tech to trip zero. Whoever um, is going to be putting out torture for you should get the weapons tech. And then obviously you're just going to slowly make your way through here with Thrawn uh, because he gives them that granted ability that gives them 50% turn meter. I'm going to use it anytime I can on a character that will be able to inflict torture because I want to make sure that um, I'm getting them back to their turns as quickly as possible to inflict another torture. So you can see Trip Zero actually managed to inflict torture as well, which was great. Thrawn obviously is going to turn meter swap as much as possible to either Grand Inquisitor or Trip Zero. Again, you're just trying to get those turns going as quickly as possible back to them to put torture out. And then I am going to waste turns, so to speak, on the character that has the lowest health. So if I can't inflict torture, I will only hit the character with the lowest health. The reason for that being, if you end up, say it's Grand Inquisitor, um, coming down to a character that only has half health or, or quarter health, whatever the it might be, and you can inflict torture, if you kill the character, the enemy, it won't count. So... I would rather have him kill an enemy with his basic that's already low health and leave the healthier enemies for the opportunity to inflict torture after the fact. Um, so again, you're just going through 
swapping your turns around as much as possible. Uh, if you want to do this on a boss, you could. You just want to keep in mind that they do have AoEs. So if you have a weaker character, it's not going to necessarily mean that they survive. Um, but I like this because it is the Datacron node. You're obviously capable of winning it. And then you can um, get some Datacron materials at the same time while you're farming Torture, which is really helpful. And the only other thing you want to keep in mind here is I still have the Zealous Ambition discs equipped. And Thrawn is a support character, so he will steal some kills as well with his basic if possible, which is also why you're most likely going to clear this node and get your Datacron rewards as well. So pretty straightforward. Love that it's the Datacron node. And we ended up getting four, so it's not totally awful, but if you're farming Datacron mats, you might as well work on that feat at the same time. Okay guys, so let's have a look at the mini boss. And the first feat that I want to show you is the Kanan and Ezra survival feat. So you can see I've got the two zealous ambition. I have a volatile accelerator, swiftness for turn meter gain. And I do have a tether tech equipped as well. Um, that is the tech, if you're not aware, that gives ability block to all, all of the enemies for two turns at the start. It is highly underrated and I absolutely love it. Um, but this is the team I'm going in with. Jedi Knight Luke Lee, Jedi Knight Revan, and Jolie. And then obviously Canon and Ezra, who are gear 10 and 11. Uh, so not the highest, <laughs> but everyone is ability blocked, which is great. They are going to hit everyone. We are obviously going to go after Nine Sister because she's taunting. And then we want to try and stun as many of them as possible. I want to kill Seventh Sister first here because she's going to assist them whenever they're taking turns and it, it will kill you. <laughs> Um, so you want to get her out as soon as possible. Then I'm going to work on attacking Grand Inquisitor specifically because fifth brother can counter. So I do not want to attack fifth brother at all with the Phoenix, Phoenix Jedi, because I don't want him killing them if possible. And then here I am going to turn meter swap. I want to try and get back to Luke's, uh, stun. So reducing his cooldowns and having him take a turn just so I can have some more um, control that way. I do unfortunately have to hit fifth brother here. So I'm going to just suck it up. I am going to die, but this is why we brought Jolie along because Jolie is able to revive them. So we are going to do that. I'm going to heal Kanan in the process. And then I want to mark fifth brother so that he's stunned and can't counter me. The volatile accelerator disc is actually helping here because the dots or what is killing the Inquisitors whenever they go to take a turn, which is fantastic because now we can win with the Phoenix Brothers surviving. So that ended up working out, I think, fairly nicely. And then you're good to go with that. So the other one on the boss node is the Hokey Religions feat. So it's your typical win with no Jedi, Sith, and unaligned Force users in your team. Um, and I found what worked really well, which has been fairly consistent for me working really well is the clone troopers with Chew with chewy as the fifth uh, i chose to do them only because my separatist squad was fairly low in stamina at this point but the inquisitors on this mini boss note are pretty nasty and i honestly didn't think my grievous team would survive it anyway so i just wanted to get through it um, even if it meant that I wasn't going to get a separatist win to double dip for the global feats. So pretty straightforward though. You're going to obviously have to go right for ninth sister again, because she's going to taunt at the start, but I do like that Rex has form up here to get rid of the purge and all the debuffs off of you. So you can keep going. I obviously still have volatile accelerator equipped. I still have my two white zealous ambition equipped, which is great because echo is a support character. Um, so not only are they going to die off from the dots, but Echo is going to do a lot of damage when he gets to take his turns, whether he's throwing his grenade um, or doing his basic either or. So it's not the cleanest because we do get the sacrifice and they do end up killing Chewie, but it does work out pretty nice in terms of just getting through it and getting the feet done and then getting the three start like I showed you earlier with the Jedi worked out in the end for us. So overall it's, it's a clean node and we don't need to go back and clean it up. All right. So this last boss here is a Dr. Aphra boss. She's with her droids. 
you have to win without uh, using any attackers, and you also have to win with Sauna Staro surviving. So they're going to hit hard because she's got her murder droids with her, and she can revive them. So we, we have to keep that in mind. But without any attackers, this is kind of great because it du it double dips on a sector feat. So you're going to get the feat for the boss and you're going to get the feat for the sector at the same time, which is fantastic. Um, I am going to take my Padme team again. I thought that this would be great because I fully expected Dr. Afro to be throwing out debuffs, burning, all this kind of stuff with her murder droids and having the protection up and the dispels and the heals and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, I figured would come in really handy for this. So again, Zealous Ambition is your best friend. Um, and you can see BT1 is obviously going to go first and try and light you on fire. And so far, we seem to be resisting the debuffs, which is great. Um, and we can just kind of make our way through. I did want to try to get rid of Afra first because I figured getting rid of BT1 would kind of feel like a wasted effort to me because Afra would just revive him. So I figured if I got rid of her first, even if I was AOE, AOEing with uh, Yoda to kind of get rid of the other droids at the same time, then at least they wouldn't revive once I killed her. So again, just managing what's going on, healing as much as possible, cleansing the debuffs off of you whenever you can you can see that they hit insanely hard <laughs> it's actually a little bit concerning um but thankfully shock and yoda are also support characters still so we're able to take advantage of the cells zealous ambition discs there and they are the ones that are going to pretty much clean up this node even though it's not going to be a perfect three stars totally fine with it because we're going to get the feet at the end of the day which is what matters so again i wanted to get rid of bt1 after getting rid of afra because he's obviously aoeing and burning and doing all the fun stuff so getting rid of him because he seems like the scariest option and then going for a trip zero i left the summon droid alone entirely the summon droid will just die of his own volition here and then that way we're through the node we get the feet done for not using any attackers. We also get the feet for the sector. And then we can go and try and make Sana survive. Okay, so the last feat here is to win with Sana surviving. Um, I thought this would be tricky. Surprised it was it was relatively okay. So we have Volatile Accelerator, Zealous Ambition, the usual suspects, Entrenched. Obviously, my Sana, as you saw, is three star gear eight. Bam Han Chewy Dash. And my mentality, because I know BT1 is going first, I'm going to shoot him. I don't want him taking that turn to do his AoE. And then I want Dash to just AoE. And we can see that he gets going pretty quickly. I'm going to not. Um, basic, I just want to get into the Whistling Birds as quickly as possible. And just have them die very, very quickly from the dots and the AoEs. So it seemed to work really nicely and three star gear eight. I'm not upset about it. All right. So that is almost all of sector four minus Ewoks. So pretty straightforward. Like I said, super happy that torture can quasi be cheesed. If you want to try to, to work on that one instead, if um, I would think that, that would work instead of doing like Ewoks, for example. Um, and it's, it's pretty good so far. So hopefully we'll have sector five tomorrow. Um, I should be okay to record the video fingers crossed. So bear with me. Super appreciate your patience. Um, and like I said, if I can crack that Ewoks feet, I'll just post a separate video on it so you can have a look, but I think it's going to be a skippable one. Um, and that is it. So hopefully we will see you tomorrow for sector five.